Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, this is it! This is Top Flight Time Machine. I am Andy Hotbody Dawson. Pow, pow, pow! I am Sam Nifty Delaney. So what? Uh, welcome along. It's the Friday episode and you get it on a Thursday evening. If you're an IFS subscriber, why not treat yourself? Start off 2024 the best way you can. Subscribe to the Iron Violin Society. Um, I a lot like of people it's say it's get, so feel go, like go, go, a go. lot of people say that it's what gets them through these dark months ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah, um, a little bit of sunshine has, every day. It is order your sunshine when the skies mm. are grey. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I should say Happy New Year because this is our first sort of podcast recording that hasn't been pre-recorded yeah. of 2024. Happy New Year to you, Sam. Well, and Happy New Year to you, Andy. Thank you very much. Um, uh, all the ones we put out this week have all been pre-recorded uh fucking months ago yeah andy uh, and i actually July. haven't spoken to each other since before christmas no, until today so it feels special it feels fresh it feels mm. like there's a, a lot of things that have mm. happened uh, i can't really remember any anything that's happened between the last time i saw you <laughs> and now um, it's been about three weeks it's been it? a long time, but it was all just, you know, sort of a... I, I had a really good lounger Christmas, you know, really good yeah. sort of did Christmas, and then I just did fuck all, which for yeah. me represents a lot of progress, you know, because I used to get very, very uh, miserable after Christmas, like, I, I don't, don't know, you know, like anticlimactic sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And I'd often try in adulthood, I'd been like it since I was a kid, and in adulthood what I'd try to do is always like plan loads and loads of stuff you know, between the 27th and, and the, and the yeah. New Year because I just wanted to, like, keep busy. And sometimes we'd even go on holiday or whatever. But this mm. year, it was sort of great because I had no inclination to do any of those things. My only inclination was to do as little as possible, stay in the house with the family. Do you know what I mean? Read, drink tea, yeah. watch movies, yeah. all those lovely things. And I did that. And it was fucking great. I felt fine. I don't think I got glum at all. I mean, a couple of dog walks a day probably did me a bit of good. And you, um, yeah, you've done well. I feel good. You've um, you, what you've done is you've 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 grasped the just rest lifestyle that we've I espoused have, for have. so long on this podcast. Well, I've been um, I've been think... doing I've been making progress on the just rest lifestyle for a few years now, but I still you know obviously it's like um, but what do they say about is they say it about golf like uh, uh you know. Um, a day to learn, a lifetime to master. That's the same with just rest, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Like yeah, you can, you can learn the just rest, but I've been, I'll yeah. be mastering it my whole life, and that was the latest sort of challenge that I've overcome: is can you just rest even in the Pyrenean <clears throat> period? Well, this I year think I think can, I managed to. You can only really fully um, master the just rest thing. There's only one real master of it, and I think that's probably Yoda. Yeah, fucking hell. You know what I mean? When you get to that age that he got to, and basically he was doing fuck all by the, by the time he, he turned up in the yeah. t- Star Wars films. Yeah. He and he, and he had been doing fuck all for advice. years, mate. It'd be de- de- decades, centuries even. And I think he's the king of the just rest. I, and that's that's what we, we aim for. I um, uh, Funnily enough, one of the things I did over Christmas was at, at, at the local cinema, they showed Empire Strikes Back one night. Right? Right. So I said to the kids, fuck this. Let's go and watch Empire Strikes back on the big screen. What mm-hmm. better Star Wars movie to watch on a big screen than that? W- were they up for the- it? Yeah, they were. The snow, Good. the attacks, right? You want to yeah. see all that stuff, don't you? So <clears> we go to it. But the thing is, I really, it's a right laugh watching Star Wars with my kids because, like, they love it like I do. But also, they. You know, we laugh all the way through because so much of it just fucking doesn't make sense. And as we know, I mean, you and I well know the the secret process that George Lucas went through. It was yeah. no process at all. He made the old thing up as he went along. And I'm like pack Yoda it, yeah. turns up, and you forget because Yoda in the later films is really wise, isn't he? And in the in the prequels, yeah. he's so wise, and everyone looks up to him. When it when Luke first finds him in that fucking swamp in Empire Strikes Back, he's just an annoying little cunt, right? He's sort of like. Yeah. He's sort of half mad and completely annoying, right? And keeps trying to nick Luke's packed lunch, which, by the way, is another strange thing about that film because he flies off <laughs> through space for fucking ages, then lands in this swamp, and he's got a little packed lunch. And there's a little <laughs> space sausage in it and, like, a sandwich. And I'm thinking, who the fuck made this for him? Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Um, so that's weird. But Yoda nicks it. But I saw something online the other day. Said, you know, people go on about Yoda being this fucking king of the Jedi and all that. But let's get it right. He had a fight with the fucking Emperor, right? Lost and then fucked off and hid in a swamp for the next 30 fucking years. <laughs> yeah. And then just died there. Yeah. I well, mean, he was that doing is just not... Rest. He was, he was just he resting while he was there. I gave it my best shot, right? Yeah. He's the evilest man in the whole fucking galaxy, right? And he's going to inflict untold pain and hardship on everyone in this entire galaxy. For, for who knows, for eternity, possibly. I have to stop him. What did you do? Well, I went along. We had a fight. It was inconclusive. And in the end, I was like knackered. So I just went away and hid for the rest of my life and just rested. Well, you didn't try again or do, or do something? No, nah, I just thought, oh, fuck it. Fuck this. I've had, I'll have give it a <laughs> why? shot. Why? It didn't work. Why did, he think, why did he think he could win that fight anyway? Yeah, Look at little him. cunt. Yeah. Little green cunt. <laughs> why did he well, think he, he could, he could use his magic. He thought he yeah. could use his magic, but he wasn't fucking counting on the Emperor having magic as well. Fucking magic's overrated, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Magic in a fight. It's all very well, all this magic in a fight. But as I always say, you can't beat an, a fucking good old-fashioned boot in the bollocks. Right? A kick in the ghoulies. That's when how you, I would have you, fucking taken you... the Emperor on if it was me. Go on, have some of that, cunt. Bang! Use your lightning in, on me in now. In the midst of a fight, trying to actually activate your magic is not easy because yeah. you've got to think about it, haven't you? And then yeah, do yeah, you've got you got to, do it's like a form of meditation. You've got to, to yeah, I've oh, got to concentrate yeah. and make the lightning come out of my fingers. I don't need to do any of that when I'm lining up a kick in the bollocks. I just give it a little run yeah. up and whack. There you go. Have that, mate. That's put yeah, you exactly. out of action for the next fucking 20 minutes. I'm going to nick your wallet and do a runner. So you've um, you've done a lot of resting over the the, the perineum, and in, yeah, in the new and year, now I put on a huge. Refreshed. I weighed myself after Christmas, and I I think I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> really, you yeah. indulged massively. So I am now on a full on no sugar, no bread. Right. I mean, the exercise isn't a problem because I exercise every day anyway. But mm. you know, ex- the the dirty secret that a lot of people try to avoid admitting is that exercise has little or no fucking influence over your weight, right? Oh, really? Yeah. It won't. It's you di- can't diet, fucking run off weight. You just can't. I mean, they say, like, that, you know, they say weight loss, 70% in the kitchen, 30% in the gym. But even that is over-egging the amount. Not in the bedroom, hey? Woohoo. Oh, it depends how you go about your business. Maybe once upon yeah. a time, but I tell you what, um, the way I fucking get at it is not burning many calories, I can tell you. <laughs> oh, unless, unless nervous exhaustion <laughs> nervous <laughs> counts as a calorie burner. <laughs> panic attacks. Oh, I burnt 500. I had such a panic attack during Congress the other night that I uh, burnt 500 calories. Burnt my old dinner off. <laughs> Just an emotional meltdown. <laughs> Self hatred burns a lot of calories. I, um, I'd, I'd lost some weight before Christmas because I had that virus thing that wouldn't go away yeah. for like three weeks, and I didn't have any booze for three weeks. Oh yeah, that, that lost me some weight, and I think all the coughing that I was doing as well. Yeah, that that's a good energy. Burn. Well. That's that a good calorie great burn. exercise. Yeah, I've still got it a little bit. You might hear it. Yeah. Cough, Sometimes you should cough even if you haven't got a cough. Apparently, it's really yeah, good for you. Go around yeah, coughing. It's good exercise. Well, it's the same with kissing, isn't it? Kissing yeah. is supposed to burn calories. A, yeah. a cough, oh, yeah, a cough yeah. is just... You're not still just trotting a, that elaborate. line out at the pub on a Friday night, are you? Yeah, yeah. Here, read this leaflet. <laughs> yeah, it's got here. calories on I it. I tell you how you lose your Christmas weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, I've still got the cough a bit, a bit because, I'll be honest, I have abused my body greatly. Uh, over Christmas. the Christmas period, since mm. I began drinking again, uh, yeah. I've I've enjoyed many drinks. Mm. Um, well, you've, you've been and, at the darts, uh, haven't you? Does the darts still the have darts. that stat, which is like more drink, more beer consumed per capita at the darts at Ali Pali 
than at any other event in the world. Anywhere on the planet. I didn't know that was a fact, but I would, I would I imagine that, that because I just mm. stood back and just watched it for a little bit with, with kind of sober, fresh eyes last night, and I just thought, mm. my God, this is fucking pure hedonism. This yeah. is just like the, the last days of the Roman Empire. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just... It's just and, but, but it's so longer, joyous. When you watch it on the box, great. you can feel the sense of joy and euphoria coming out on the oh, screen yeah. in a way that you it's don't... Amazing. At football, there's also... Even, you know, football matches don't have a big atmosphere like they used to anyway. But even when you do see one, there's a, there's a little bit, there's hostility and there's menace. And I don't yeah. feel that at the darts, you know. It's just joy. There's frustration yeah. mainly at football. Football's yeah. mainly about frustration. Yeah. It's bad You're not for you. getting what it's you bad. want. Football's bad for your mental health, isn't it? You, you don't get what you want. Sometimes you do get what you want, like Liverpool fans, but then your manager, Jurgen Klopp, comes out and says that you're not, you're not being loud enough. Oh, yeah, right. that, he said that after they thrashed us. Being... Yeah. Yeah. And That's I didn't even notice it being, being a particularly prick. bad atmosphere at all. I was too busy yeah. fucking focusing on the fact that I was soaking wet, freezing and losing 5-0. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, he was saying that they weren't, they weren't being noisy enough or something like that. But yeah, the darts, it is, it's just pure joy. And where we sit, we're in the family stand, which kind of overlooks, it's, it's, it's right in the corner, like level with the stage and where the board is. Mm. Uh, so you're kind of just overlooking... The, the entire floor where all the tables are. And, yeah, you just see it progress as the evening mm. goes on. People getting more and more vociferous and fucking crazed and deranged. And it's great. It's a joy to watch. Mm. Mm. But I did see um, Super Mario getting kicked out uh, on the semi-finals night and it took four uh, stewards to remove him from the venue. Fucking I don't hell. know what his crimes were. I don't know what Super Mario had done. Chucking bananas was, about, probably. It behind was him. enough. Chucking bananas yeah. over his shoulder to make the other cunt slip over. Chucking red shells around, killing his yeah. nearest enemy. <laughs> but it was enough to take four of them to get him out of there. So I don't know what Super Mario had done. Yeah, oh, no, um, well, you oh, know, as I said to you on Twitter earlier, I have um, had physical confrontations with the stewards yeah. at, at Ali Pali. And yeah, um, yeah I mean, they, 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 you know, they gave a good account of themselves. They're up for it. They're game boys, as they used to say. <laughs> but at the, um, yeah, because at football, stewards are shit now. I don't know what they like at Student and Light. The stewards at West Ham are a fucking, like, <laughs> I mean, they are literally like, a fucking joke. You might as well, you know what? You might as well have animal quackers, the cast of animal quackers, <laughs> yeah. as the fucking. Yeah. They'd be more intimidating. These cunts. They. Get, I mean, it's not even their fault. At, at Upton Park, they used to have stewards who sort of were like. I think they were. They kind of seemed like ex West Ham hooligans. They'd sort of hired them as. They were like hired muscle, right? Men with scars and stuff who kind of had the respect of the crowd and were stopping to getting out of control. But these guys, they're just like a bunch of local. So, I think do you know what? Students mainly. Students, or like, yeah. there's a lot of. Excuse me, um, excuse me. Do you know where? If you go, like, I'm looking for this row, row Z, Z, C four three one. Yeah, uh, I don't know. You know, like, yeah. I mean, like, it could be like up there, or at the same time, I don't know. It, could, it to be honest with you, it could be down there too. You know what you should do is like ask someone. Yeah, I'm asking you. You can. <laughs> You're the fucking steward. Yeah, uh, I tell you what, though. If you wait here, I'll go and get my manager. And yeah. what was it you wanted again, though? Was it that you wanted a Coke? No, I want to know where the fucking seat is. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. All right, I'll go and ask my manager. I'll be back in about half an hour or something like that. Are you in a <laughs> hurry? Not, yeah, I'm in a I, hurry because I'm going to see the it. game. Oh, you're watching the game. Do you like football, bruv? Yes, I'm here <laughs> to... This right is place. a football stadium. Is, oh, is it Arsenal? No, it's not Arsenal. You're always standing, you fucking man. Come. <laughs> That's what it's like. <coughs> yeah, they, they are fucking useless. I had to, um, I had to summon a steward to get his boss last night. At <laughs> you lamparded a steward at this stage of my life. I, 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 I had a Lampard a steward. <laughs> it was after the thing had finished, right? The, the match had finished anyway. Mm. Luke Humphreys, the world champion, well deserved, was mm. still on stage celebrating with his friends and family, getting some media stuff done, getting some photographs, taking with sponsors, all that kind of thing. They also presented him with another trophy, which was three huge gold darts. The Ballon d'Or. Joined together. And I, I don't know what it was for. It's, it's called it the Ballon d'Or. 
Was that the Ballon watching, d'Or, was it? it? Yeah, I was watching it on TV and I was fucking creep. I mean, I was in a state of high euphoria. Me and Leonard watched it together. And it's great when you see your kid get so into something, like so invested oh, so quickly in it yeah. sort of thing. And yeah. like we were sort of in that state of euphoria that I think everyone yeah. there at the event obviously was. And I think everyone around the country, I was getting texts from people I hadn't seen in years. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I got I got a text from Jason Cundy. And all it just said was the darts in capital letters and like loads of and loads of crying emojis. <laughs> That's amazing. That's incredible. But like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like like when there was COVID or 9-11, people start getting in touch with each other who they haven't heard yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in this state of like high euphoria about the whole thing. And uh, then they said, and now he will be presenting with the Ballon d'Art. The Ballon d'Art. And that <laughs> fucking mad, absolutely mad trophy came out, and I just couldn't. I was in a, I was in a state of like hysteria. I was giggling like a fucking demented yeah. schoolgirl, and I couldn't stop. It was so funny. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I mean that that was the point where fucking matey boy Stewart says, "Start saying to everyone now, right? Right, time to leave now. Yeah. Make your way to the exits, please." I yeah. went, "You what? This is the this fucking. Is you're in the out, eye please? of the emotional storm." Yeah. I said, mate, that's the world champion on the stage. He's still on there. He's still that's the celebrating. Ballon d'Or. This is what we're here for. He's got, the, he's got that thing. I don't even know what it's called, but they're saying it on the telly. The Ballon d'Or, apparently. Was it Was it for the most 180s or something like that? Or just I for being so, the best yeah. dartist year? Yeah. Uh, did they say best what it was Best dartist. For? Best dartist. I right. don't know. Yeah, I thought it was just for player of the tournament, which you just explained was... Even the winner would be, you would yeah. think. Yeah, the winner, yeah. It, well, They'd already fucking decided they needed and, and Luke like, Littler for the PR so badly. And he's like, no, you you got you got to leave, mate, you out. I says, no way. I says, go and get your boss. I'll talk to your boss. <laughs> because the kid was like about 19 or something. So the Oi, fuck. now listen, I've heard about yeah. you. Look, I'm a friend and business associate of Sam Delaney. Write it down. Yeah, go and yeah. tell your boss. <laughs> Sam Delaney, who admittedly is not allowed in here Darts, tonight. Darts. To that, this time in 2013, I believe it was. Look it up. <laughs> Sam Delaney is a close personal friend of Jason Cundy, and I believe they are. Uh, it's a bit of a mover and a shaker darts, in the minute. dart world. So I says, go get your fucking boss, mate. Oh, that'll kill a bit of time. And mm-hmm. it's still still going on on stage. He's just got the, the Ballon d'Or, dart, yeah. which is, mm. you know, as you, as you saw, an incredible trophy. Mm. And his boss comes back, and I says, look, mate, He's telling me we have to leave now. This isn't finished. He says, yeah, the event's over now. Everyone has to go. And there's still a big crowd right at the front on the floor where the tables are, still mm. chanting and everything and applauding Luke Humphreys, quite rightly, world mm. champion. He's just won the last four tournaments that he's been in. He's mm. on a fucking 20-match unbeaten run or something. Incredible stuff. I says, this is the world champion. This is the, the winner of this tournament that you've been here for the last three weeks for. He's still <laughs> up there. It's not finished. <laughs> yeah. Till he comes off the stage. The crowd out. We've all paid a pretty penny for the tickets to see this yeah, moment. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and I've yeah, you know, I've done a series of tweets aimed at the Ali Pali's official account there. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's it's like, all right, you're not profitable to us anymore. Out the yeah, fucking fuck door off. you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bars are shut. Merch is finished. Hot dogs are gone. Fuck you're an off inco- now. At this stage, you're an inconvenience to them. Yeah, exactly. That's the word I yeah. used in the tweets this morning. You're yeah. a pest. You're yeah. a pesky inconvenience. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we've made but, all know, our money now. We've said this before about football. When you realise that they yeah. can create those football stadiums now, like you can watch it AI and you could have a crowd there, right? Yeah. And we've said, we've said before, and I actually do believe this is true, that in the future it will, it will come to a point where football clubs <clears throat> realise that fans attending games in person are actually more of a drain economically well, it right, is. Yeah, exactly. than, than, than a benefit because all their money is coming from TV audiences. And in actual fact, if you banned fans from the stadium, then, you know, surely that makes the TV rights even more valuable because, it, because TV becomes the only way mm. that people can watch the game. Therefore, TV can pay, would pay more for the rights. And then they don't have to police it they don't have to deal with the sort of fucking brand issues that fans that because fat fans are a random factor. Fans are treated like shit football, and even at darts where they're much more. Yeah. I would say at the darts they're more integral to the spectacle than they are at football. 
that's that's the thing like you said before you can't create that atmosphere that you get at the darts by any kind of artificial means they're there no. they're there but it's an inconvenience ultimately they'll make a fuckload of money out of them but if then you watch once- the darts on tv it is genuinely i would say almost as much about the crowd and the atmosphere as the darts if you're a tv yeah. viewer of it yeah. I think because it gets you so excited, the atmosphere that you can sense yeah, yeah. in the room. Yeah, I mean they did it in twenty twenty one during lockdown, and it doesn't work. You can't do it without a crowd. It just doesn't work. But no. but yeah, like I said, as soon as the fucking tills have switched off, the, yeah. you're, you're a fucking annoyance, and you might as well just fuck off, get out, get, get out of yeah. our fucking house fuck now, off, cunts. go away, it's over. And I'm I'm saying, look, mate. We want to, we're not just here to watch the match. We want to see this guy celebrate what he's done. He mm. made a brilliant, brilliant speech afterwards when he was being brilliant. interviewed about the mental health struggles he's been yeah, through. Yeah, it's the great, depression, it? yeah, The anxiety issues and everything, how yeah. he's turned that all around, and he's the world champion. And they used to a, just call that the yips. Story. They used to call that the yips. But it, it no, was like... He's not at it that star title. It was, it, it was the got, yips times ten. Uh, I think that's what he said. <laughs> he went, obviously, people know that I've been struggling with a condition called yips times ten. <laughs> for the last couple of years. Which I made up myself. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Bristol suffered from Yips times five, which is yeah. the worst I'd ever been. And I've, I've took it to this ten, is, but I'm, I'm better now. I doubled it. Yeah, I doubled it, but I fought back. And just to stand there and watch him after everything everything is achieved, watch him celebrate him with his mm. friends and his family yeah, and just, just a special wallowing moment. in it. Mm. I'm sorry, but the event is not over until he walks nah, off the stage. No way. Then I'll go home. Then I'll go no away. But they think that's just for telly and it's really annoying yeah. because you've paid your fucking money to be there and see that. Exactly. So fuck off, Ali Polly. Yeah, um, that's out of order. I'll be back next year. See you then. <laughs> if you let us in. If I'm not on uh, something on yeah. the list. But, um, um, yeah, apart from that, honestly, two just unbelievably exciting nights of darts. It was yeah. just the fucking... The Luke Little thing is unreal. Mm. I mean... And he's so laid back as well. He's just so chilled yeah, out. Yeah, he was great in his interview as well. So it's fucking Have you weird. seen his... Um, There's something have you seen almost... His... What, his Go Doris? On. Yeah, I have. No, no. I wasn't oh. going <laughs> to get onto that. All oh, right. But there is, there is something in that. But um, his daily routine. You see his daily routine? Is it cheese and ham sandwich? And, That's or... part... Well, yeah. gets a gets a bed at noon, mm. right? Plays on his Xbox. Yeah. Has an omelette and or a pizza. Yeah. Or well, sometimes an omelette and the pizza. Darts. Sometimes both. Practices right. his darts for a bit. Yeah. And goes back to, <laughs> goes back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who he reminds me of a little bit in look and attitude? Is um what's his name? Callum Mawson, the Sunderland Shitter. Fucking hell, yeah. There's a bit of that about him, isn't there? There's something about yeah. You know the way that he carried himself with that immense calm and confidence, confidence. even though he was really mm. young? Mm. That's what I yeah. saw him and I thought he reminds me of Callum Mawson. Yeah, but he's achieving even more than Callum well, Mawson did, if well, possible. Well, as Matt, I would say. I, no, as I think, it's still I think early. It, they're on a level. They're on a level. Ca- Callum Mawson, of course, peaked in, I think it was 2017. And for those yeah. that don't know, of course, he was the lad who took a shit in the seat at the Stadium of Light. Uh, he claims it was a piss and not a shit. But, but, but he, uh, yeah, we have to say that for legal reasons. There's, there's two versions. Um, <laughs> he, he, he did it because... And this is his own reasoning. He had been on the piss mainly on uh, what was it, dark fruits, right? All day, dark fruits, and, and all it, it he'd was, eaten. It was the third of tw- December or the second of December. Yeah, all he'd eaten in twenty four hours was two, two advent calendar chocolates <laughs> from two different calendars. From he got two one different from his calendars, mom, the flash and, bastard. And one, one was from his boss. Yeah, <laughs> you would have wanted. <laughs> you would have how often do you the, think you're... about Callum Mawson? Like, uh, how often do you think about him most days? Probably, uh, that probably took a couple of weeks. Right, I think he'll, about he'll, him he'll like a lot in my, in my head in that in that iconic picture of him snapped when he I, sitting uh, with his trousers around his ankles at the stadium. Like jalapeno, jalapeno. I bought a book last night. I was it like again in By dark, Callum post, Mawson? Post, post, but no, but someone almost as good. It was like. I was in post darts euphoria chatting to my mate over WhatsApp about it. And then for whatever reason, we strayed into like other areas. And before we knew it, we were talking about a particular individual who's always been dear to our hearts and a person of interest to me and my mate uh, ever since we were younger. And uh, 
he was reminding me of various things about this guy. I can't remember why it came up, but I ended up thinking, fuck this, I'm going to buy his book. It's not available on Amazon. So I had to find a secondhand copy on eBay. So what I'll do is I'll tell you the title of the book and I'll give yeah. you a guess or two about who to think the book is by and all I will say is I've got tremendously high hopes of this book for content the book is right. called it's out of print now I think it was right. originally published in the mid noughties mid yeah. to late noughties right. um, it's out of print it's not on Kindle or anything you can only get a paperback on eBay and it's called um, be careful what you wish for fucking hell and this did you say this is a book of poetry no, it's not of poetry. No, it's, not poetry. it's an autobiography. Oh, sorry. I thought you said I thought you mentioned poetry at some point there. No, it's an autobiography, uh, an autobiography by a public be- figure, right? Oh, called Care for What You Wish Your and it was originally published in the mid to late noughties. And it's I, I assume it's a man from that. It's title. a man. Yeah. And I've just got a guess just from that title alone. That's a lot of go on. It's a, it's not um, yeah. Um, my He's first a, guess. Yeah. Go on. Are you going to so give me a, a clue of some kind? Well, he um, he was a big he was a, he was he was a big person of interest, particularly to the tabloids between about two thousand and two and two thousand and ten, I would say. And then he kind of just disappeared from public life. Um, but he burned very bright in those years, and the tabloids see, loved really, him. Really, and if I've you think really, of things, be really... careful you what you wish for. So, a book about kind of all your dreams coming true but them turning out not to be quite as joyful as you might have imagined. <clears throat> um, I've got very vague memories of 2002 to 2010 because it was, it was parenting years. Oh. Is it is it the lottery lout? It is the lottery lout. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that is, that is like the, your shape guessing at the live shows, mate. Fuck me. What about yeah. that? Yeah, that's oh, amazing. He did a book. He did a book. And basically, me and my mate were just sending things that we'd found out online about him. And they got so funny that in the end, I just thought, what am I doing going on Wikipedia to look for funny things when I could be uh, buying this man's book and learning out much better stuff about him? So this book is arriving not not because it's coming from eBay. It's not coming for like a long time, right? Uh, it won't be here till like Tuesday, which in these days is a long time because yeah. I like things to arrive immediately. Um, right, he had a Chinese tattoo on his neck, which meant sweet and sour chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Carroll, that's his name. <laughs> yeah, Mikey Carroll, uh, self styled, oh, self named, king of, of the chavs. King of the chavs. That, but that's what he called himself. This right, is going to have to be. His, it might be dived. deep dive. Dwarf? I'll tell you. I'll tell you some other quotes. Right. Michael I have. Sh- I have shagged. He observes in one chapter some of the very best totty in Norfolk. I am well on Norfolk. my way to. I am well on my way to chalking up a thousand plus birds. <laughs> <laughs> well on my way. Is right. he writing them down in a book? What's he doing? I would buy a kilo of coke. Carol states, 500 ecstasy tabs, 200 LSD tabs, and a pound of cannabis. This would last us five days. Uh, we acted just like Roman generals, an assertion which, if accurate, begs the question as to why the empire didn't collapse faster than it did. Um, <laughs> which things do you regret? This is from an interview. He says, the drugs. I can't say I regret the women. The crimes? No, I can't say I regret them because they did buzz me a lot. When I was younger, it was nice. The adrenaline when you get in a police chase is unreal. <laughs> um, and there was another Fuck. one in 2003. In two, he won in 2000. He won nine point something million in 2002. Nine point seven million, it was says here. In yeah. 2003, he was arrested for catapulting steel balls out of the window of his Mercedes van whilst drunk. Of course he did. Yeah. Uh, why, why wouldn't uh, you? Yeah. When you got I'm going to get it? some... Where can I get some steel balls? <laughs> Fucking hell. This is incredible. Do you remember? I'm going like, to get this book. He turned his fucking be. house into like a banger racing sort of... Um, yeah, he had a track. track. It. It, was, yeah. it, it was a lovely big lawn as well, and he just rode by, cars round yeah. and round it again. Even his again, mates just chase each other around in old fucking bangers <clears> in circles. I mean... 
The thing is, the blokes yeah. are... I mean, he did some bad things as well, and I'm sure if we get stuck into the book, we'll discover some things that are unsavoury. But we'll have to in look one at them. sense, he's a hero yeah. because he got that money and he didn't cunt about with it, did he? He went and had a, a right fucking good time with yeah. it. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, um, do you know what he's doing now? Uh, is is he a, a refuse collector? C- close. He now works at a quarry. Oh, he's a quarry man. That's a Lovely. great job, isn't it? A yeah. quarry. Yeah. Oh, we need to do more quarry work on this episode. Yeah. We should just do a di- we should do a three episode deep dive yeah. into quarries. History box quarries. Yeah. 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 I'll write that down. I'll write that down. Uh so yeah, that's that's one we need to look at. I'll order a copy of that before I put the episode out and demand starts to go through the roof. Uh I want to find out if he was on Jeffrey Epstein's Sex Island with Stephen Dawkins. Well on that list, yeah. Mm. Mikey you know, Carroll also- King apparently there's a list and it says Prince Andrew, Michael Jackson, Professor mm. Stephen Hawking, Bill Clinton, Mikey Carroll, King of the Chavs. <laughs> yeah. And apparently Epstein sent him his <clears throat> private jet regularly to fly him over there. Out of all of them names that were on there, the one where I went, yeah, of course, was um, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, yeah. He's a, Dirt, he was a sex dirty maniac. Bugger. Dirty Stephen bugger, Hawking. wasn't he? He was. But he you was. know, like... You know what, um, go on. He, well, he, they say that in the paper I read that he was there and there was a load of other scientists there because on Sex Island, they he also rented it out for non-sex events. Right or events oh, right. that were like cloaks for sex like events, science conventions. And, yeah, and there was a big science convention, right, of, of all the top scientists in the world, and it was just about gravity. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Stephen Hawking said. <coughs> he told his wife, oh, "I'm going to, uh, I've got to go to a conference on uh, an island." What island is it? Uh, sex sex island. island. Oh, no, sorry. I mean, uh, no, no, sorry. I mean, um, science island. Science island. Science island. And we're going there. Oh, what's the conference about, Stephen? Um, g- gravity. It's me and all the other best scientists. And we're all going to talk about gravity and how it works and see if we've I don't know. We've got some new ideas about come it. Come up with some new some things new to do with gravity. Through. It's going to be some like. new stuff happening. We're going to be looking at <laughs> new trends. New trends we want to be looking at. You know, it's important. So, so anyway, I'm, I'm going. The the fella who set the old thing up, he's uh, sending a private jet to take me there, and um, I'll be Fuck back in a few hell. days. And I was like, yeah. fucking hell, they were at a gravity conference, fucking Epstein night. I'll tell you what, lads, when you finish your fucking conference, I'll show you a couple of ladies who fucking defy gravity, mate. Fucking hell. That Michael Carroll's coming as well. <laughs> you like him. He's yeah, you like him. He's, bring, he's bringing a load of girls from Norfolk, apparently. <laughs> You're coming over on a private jet. He's coming over on a 737 with all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh. hell. But... Let's not let's not dwell on all that too much because at the end of the day, it's it fucking nonsense. It is disgusting. Nonsense it's stuff. really nonsy as hell. But... All I did think, when I'm reading it, I was like so astounded. I woke up someone and I was reading it and all I thought was, what a fucking hassle. When I read things about people like this, right, I think, look, yeah. don't get me wrong, right, everyone likes a little bit of hanky-panky, slap and tickle, yeah. call it what you will, right? Who Given doesn't? Chance, it's, yeah. it's fun. If you get the chance, you know, go, go for try. your life, fill your boots, right? Any young, any young lads listening out there, Take my advice. If you get an opportunity, just go for it. Go for it and see what happens. Right? But all I'd say is, is that it's such a hassle. Like, if you're Bill Clinton, right, there's, and you're that desperate to be having it off behind your wife's back, there's got to yeah. be fucking other ways you can do it other than accepting an invite to a fucking, like, international pervert sex island. Do you know what I mean? Like, what a pain in the ass. And like all the risks involved. Couldn't you just like I don't know, 
go on a fucking app or something instead. Bill Clinton was so fucking obsessed, though, wasn't he? It seemed to be... He was fanny he, he was mad. the be-all and end-all for him. Yeah. Fanny mad. It, like, yeah. at first I thought... Because I thought he was a good president, right? It was a good era for the American economy. He was he, His values, yeah. his political values, not his personal ones, seemed pretty sound to me, and I always was a fan of his. So mm. I didn't want to believe it, but I think now, when all's said and done, we can... He will be remembered as the most fanny mad fucking president. Only. And also possibly the most noncy. But don't forget Trump's on that list as well. The Epstein list. He's yeah. on there as well. Apparently so there's a, a, an unnamed prime minister on there, isn't there? Oh, is there? Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I bet you it's Jim Callahan. <laughs> yeah, bound to be. It's fucking bound to be, isn't it? That, get, that get fucking by- dirty rotter. Getting back to Mighty Carol, there's someone else who wrote a book called Be Careful What You Wish For. I know who it is, because I looked it up last night. It's Simon Jordan, isn't it? Simon Jordan, yeah. Are they on a similar bought, mindset? Well, <laughs> Simon Jordan's makes sense as well, because he bought the football club he loves, didn't he? And then it, and as you know, yeah. if you listen to him on Talk Sport, he just found the whole thing such a fucking annoying hassle. <laughs> like, yeah. from day one, he just fucking hated yeah. it. But yeah, I would imagine did. that yeah. because well, I've interviewed Simon Jordan and met him a few times, and I know he's got this sort of, what would you say, bombastic kind of persona. Mm. But I actually think he's, I think he's a really interesting bloke, and he's okay. quite entertaining. <laughs> and I think his book would be really funny because I had him on news thing when he'd been in the news because he'd been right. driving along in South London, right, which presumably is where he's from. He's a Palace fan. He'd been driving around in some like dodgy part of South London with his dad. And in his fucking, some sort of outrageous car, right? Mm. A fucking Lotus or something like that, right? And the windows are down, he's blaring out music, and he's got a fucking 20 grand Rolex, right, with his fucking elbow out the window. So, you know, fuck's sake. So some guy (laughs) comes up next to him on a fucking motorbike and, like, pulls a gun and goes, give us your fucking watch. And Simon Jordan (laughs) wouldn't give it to him. (laughs) And they got yeah. into a big fucking standoff and, and like, right. he started fighting him out the window. And in yeah. the end, the guy fucking rode off or something. I can't remember. You can Google the story, but it was an did amazing... He, did he, did he, any time in the fight, did he activate his magic? Or was it just a <laughs> yeah. regular fight? Exactly. I don't want to have to use my magic on you, but I will. <laughs> Millionaire magic. I am the former <laughs> owner of Crystal Palace Football Club. <laughs> and I will use my magic on you. <laughs> the magic that is inherent with that title. All Premier League club owners yeah. have a form of magic. Yeah. Um, the- yeah so, but he sort of fought the guy off, and I was quite impressed by that. So I got him on to talk about it like a couple of days right. later, and he was yeah. very funny about. It. He was funny about it, you know. He just right. thought it was funny, and I sort of, <laughs> I just like I like him. Plus, he's hitched up with my old mate Michelle Jubry now. And they've got, uh, they've got, right. a, yeah, they've got a kid. Blimey! Yeah, blimey! You could get invited around for Christmas. Well, no, sure. I've, I've been wondering when that's yeah. going to come. Yeah, they they don't live that I'm far right, away yeah. from me. Yeah, I might drop her a note. Yeah. Okay, now all the showbiz that goes on down there in London. Um, let's do some football predictions before we finish. It's uh, it's FA Cup weekend. So uh, the fucking we did. Some, I hate we did FA some Cup third round weekend. Do you know why? The Beeb. It's one of those sporting weekends that the Beeb cream themselves over. Yeah, yeah. Or that no one yeah. else does. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's just so All wonderful. The shocks. It's the so wonderful, and I'm here at this great little club here in the arse end of fucking nowhere, and it's yeah. just what football's all about. Fuck it. Fuck off. We've fucking got a little boring. Barrow, and they're looking forward to the visit of. Uh, Burnley uh, <laughs> yeah and let me tell you all week this town has been absolutely buzzing with excitement we were in the butcher shop earlier in this week and this yeah. is what they had to say and then you got to listen to an interview with some dreary fucking butcher from some yeah, fucking yeah. stick village somewhere right yeah. and he's going oh well, we like oh, we've got a special on fucking lamb's liver this week oh <laughs> also I hope we win it's so fucking. Oh. It's all just so contrived and boring. We've put some. We've put some fucking rosettes in the window. Oh, it's gonna be brilliant. <laughs> so, suddenly he's Tubby Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I used to play a football with myself, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm quite invested in that. But what I really like these days are kidneys. I love kidneys. I eat them raw. 
Um, so the FA Cup third round weekend, but there is one huge tie which we'll get onto when we yeah. do the predictions. Here's the latest on the scores, right? I'm on 51, you're on 52, result spots on 70. It's fucking the, the hell. Lead is what is this? I don't feel outrageous. like there's been any fucking 1 nils all season in the Premier League. Well, it's the FA Cup third round, so everything could change this weekend, hopefully. So here we go. We've got, first of all, San Peterborough versus Leeds. Oh, um, I would say that would be. Uh, that could be close. That could go to a replay. I might say one all for that. One one for that. I think Leeds will win that one two nil. Uh, Watford versus Chesterfield. That feels like a home win for Watford. I think I'll go three nil Watford that one. Um. Yeah, I'll say I'll say four one. Four one. The Bit magic the of the top. cup. Mm. The magic of the cup. Stoke versus Brighton. What do you reckon of that? Oh, that could be a good one. I think that could be a shock. I'm going to say 2 1 Stoke. Stoke on form. I'll go 1 1 for that one. And they'll take them back to whatever the name of Brighton's oh, yeah. ground is. Um, West Ham United versus Bristol City. 2 1 West Ham. 2 1 West Ham against Bristol City. I think you'll win this one 2 0. Results, but of course, there's one nil to the home teams in all of this game, which means that Sunderland versus Newcastle, which wow. of course is the big one. I cannot wait for one. this. When is it? Sunday. So Saturday, Saturday lunchtime, quarter to one, ITV. Oh, I can't wait. Um, Definitely going to watch this. We have given over the entire North Stand to Newcastle. Six thousand tickets mm. we've given them. Uh, where of course the our away end is just the top section of the North Stand. Yeah. So. Thousands of our season ticket holders have been displaced and Fucking told hell. to sit somewhere else. That's out of not order. Only, not only that, the, uh, they've also got the executive, what's, what's called the Black Cats Bar, which is in hmm. the North Stand for yeah. Sunderland yeah. season ticket holders. They've been given that, but it's costing Newcastle fans 600 quid a ticket to be wow. in. Basically what it is, what it boils down to, it is a money-making exercise yeah. For the skin flint owners of Sunderland Football Club, disgusting. Uh, that's, a, that's all it's about. And I saw that they decorated those bars with all welcome yeah. Newcastle and yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, that's yeah, yeah. So they've got this Black Cats bar, and some representatives of Newcastle uh, have gone in there today and have put up some signage and some banners and all this kind of thing, which has. It's enraged the already infuriated Sunderland fans. Yeah, I mean it's bollocks. Still. I mean, I must say, when I was at Anfield, I was surprised that they'd done a few bits in the away end by the bar where they'd put up little kind of West Ham things. Yeah. And I thought, I felt patronised, frankly. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know what you, I mean? I did. You feel I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> Why have you put up all this? Oh, look, we put up a... Here you go, you daft little cockneys. We put up a little flag for you to <laughs> make you feel at home. The window. <laughs> yeah, so you don't get homesick. <laughs> I think the psychology is that there's less there's less chance of it getting smashed up if there's a little bit of representation of oh, your club is that why in they the do away it? end. But to give them the executive lounge and displace all those Sunderland season ticket holders. All right, cup matches don't come as part of season tickets. I get that. Yeah. But that's not that's not the fucking but you, point. But you get that's, a window to buy your seat, don't you? Yeah, you, you get do. a window to you buy do. your seat and you want to stay away in your own fans seat. And never in those seats. Yeah. Yeah. We've never had away fans in those seats for any match ever. Yeah. Uh so yeah, so they've put this fucking signage up and these little there's a little framed photograph which says cheer up Peter Reed. Which is a song that That's so annoying. Newcastle fans have been singing yeah. for decades, and it's just roll out the red carpet. Here are our tits. Won't you suck on them? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's just I, I you don't might know. as well. Club, you might as a metaphorically, you've put them all on a private jet and flown them straight to Sex Island. Yeah. for a gravity conference. You might as well, and they could have watched it on the telly yeah. while getting sucked off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, well, I hope Sunderland win this, and I think you might. Um, I'm going to say 2-1. People are saying that if he does lose this, Eddie Howe could be out. Uh, well, I mean, they've lost that last seven out of the last eight before mm. this. Mm, which a terrible run. suggests that it could be on. But if, you've, if you're if you on a losing streak, the place to come is Sunderland. Because we <laughs> yeah. will put a stop to that yeah. any way we can. 
but I'm going to go 2-1 as well because we've beaten them 2-1 on more than one uh, momentous yeah. occasion but I, I, I don't really give a fuck you know it's it's kind of it feels like it's a free hit because we're in the championship they're, they're the richest yeah. club in the world and yeah. everything that goes with that which is pretty awful yeah but it is a free hit it, and it, I know what you mean it, like when we get when we're in big derbies I'm like fucking hell I really don't want to give a shit blah 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 but when it comes to it it's just it'll just be oh, it'll be a pain oh, it, I yeah. pity you because it'll be the whole thing win lose or draw from the moment you wake up in the morning will be a painful and horrid experience <laughs> yeah and, and <laughs> we, will, I mean? we will lose we will lose three or four nil um no, Sunderland yeah, are good but, but, now. They're good. You're not going to get just fucking rolled over. You're a good team, aren't you? Oh no, we will. We will. They're on. A, they're on a really bad run. And if you're on a bad right. run, cut my Sunderland. You know, we we had QPR once who hadn't run away from home for a year, and they they came and just walked away with the three points as if nothing had happened. It, 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 it it's it's notorious. But that all that signage has been taken down, and the club has issued an apology. It's. Is that, oh, we had no idea. This is a terrible thing. This should never have happened. Oh, well, oh no, no. I'm angry now. I'm going to look into this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're well, going to they be saying, what? aren't they? What? What? What happened? No. <laughs> what? We, we 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 didn't say they could do that. Is this you this fuckers. is this? Maybe this, you should yeah. have fucking asked. Is this a this American man child that you have in charge, or is he not involved yeah, anymore? For, French, yeah, the French American billionaire yeah. who hasn't got any extra actual money. I think his his mum's got his money. Mm. It's in a trust or something like that. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's really badly run. It's really badly run, and uh, this is this. It keeps getting lower and lower through th- this Newcastle fixture because we turned down. We we gave Middlesbrough two thousand a few years ago in the cup and said it's not safe to have more than that. Sorry, yeah. that's the way it is. And this one, we've just rolled over and says, "Yeah, you can have six thousand. Yeah, you can have." Yeah, it could be bedlam in the city bar. centre. Could be, but they're all coming in on coaches. It's a bubble event. Uh, they're all they're all six thousand of them coming on coaches from Newcastle, in a convoy. They're all fucking a coming on convoy. fucking coaches in a big fucking bubble. <laughs> a Johnny bubble. <laughs> We're coming from the cathedral on the hill all the way to the shit heap <laughs> by the weir. <laughs> and uh, but I think after the game they can just do what they want they can go wherever they want they haven't got to get back on they the coaches so I don't know what will happen yeah, interesting. so watch out for that there you go that's the predictions feels like that's the episode yeah been quite a long one yeah nice but to be it's back, good though. to be back a lot to get off our chests it is and we'll be back after the weekend and onwards with loads more stuff into 2024 thanks very much for listening and goodbye goodbye goodbye